It is an honor to be here and I'm very um, glad we are um, also celebrating the memory of uh, Jackson Wheeler. I'm going to read um, poems that are new poems and uh, I'm taking language from other disciplines, uh, mostly from biology and medicine, and I, I'm using that language to, uh, to create new poems. The first one is, is entitled, On a Silver Tray. The world has become heavy, I tell my doctor. A door's handle, a page in a book, an empty glass. I want you to see this, she says. She points at the black and white image on her computer screen. She wears a wedding band, but I don't want to know anything about her. I don't want her to have a husband, children, parents, siblings. This is your spine, she says, from C1 to L5. Do you see these spots? Yes, I say. What are they? Sadness, she says. Are you sure, I ask? It's a clear case, she says, the location, the shape, the density. Some patients present transparent sadness. We call it type zero, very difficult to diagnose, even using a dye for contrast. Yours is translucent, type one and it's shaped like pellets, you see? Very common in type one. Type two, the opaque sadness, is shaped like filaments that run alongside the muscle fibers. Type one stays close to the spine, may cause weakness, trembling, paresthesia, night sweats, sexual dysfunction. There is also type three, is web-shaped, settles around the neck. Patients describe it as having a bridle around the throat, produces speech impediments, sometimes muteness. The last identified sadness is called inner type, she says. It generates in the amygdala, it looks like a rain of electrical spores that can reach any part of the body. Does type 1 explain my symptoms, I ask? We can't be sure, she says. We are still in the earliest stages of research, but sadness explains many things. What should I do, I ask? Some patients try to rest more and calm down, but sometimes they fall into hypersomnia, she says. Balance is everything, she adds. Some patients cry. Some play sports because of dopamine release. Some listen to music, Bach, most of all. I don't like sports, I say, but I like Bach. What do you do? with your own sadness, I ask. I just keep plowing, she says. Will I improve, I ask. You will, she says, but there is no cure for sadness. It stays with you always. What about future sadness, I ask. We will cross that bridge when we get there. Do you pray, meditate, she asks. Not really, I say. How can the body function with all this sadness, I ask. Nobody knows, she says. But some scientists theorize that the body wouldn't be able to function without sadness. Just a hypothesis. Do you think we could survive a lifelong load of sadness delivered in a single day, I ask. She plays with her wedding band. Imagine all your sadness, doctor, at once, on a silver tray, I say. All at once, on a silver tray, she says, like the head of John the Baptist.
The second poem has an epigraph, a short epigraph. Santiago Ramón y Cajal proposed that neurons are not continuous throughout the body. The word synapse was introduced in 1897 by Charles Sherrington. Synapse. Soon, my father says, you will put two silver coins over my eyes. You are going to be out of the hospital in a couple of days, I lie. Neurons are not all directly joined in a reticulum. The nurse just left. The oxygen saturation is low, she told me. My father plays with the bed sheets as if kneading the fabric, making a nest. Why is the ceiling so far away, my father says. Information from other cells enters neurons through dendritic tentacles and exits via a gap at the end of long axons. My father lifts his arm, the one not attached to the IV, and picks up imaginary fruits, perhaps their delicate eggs, partridge or quail. He places them on his chest what are you doing, father? I ask. I am bringing this home, he says. Nobody should be alone. In a neuron, the action ends. Is everybody gone? My father asks. Don't forget to lock the door. Days and weeks go by. My father sleeps long hours fewer neurons willing to reach across the synapse void. My father will die with his eyes open as if wanting to touch, to be touched. Mm. This is called thermostat. Turn down the thermostat it's so hot here, my mother says. She's sitting in a wheelchair near the window. The thermostat is a white plastic box on the wall. It has a small digital screen with two buttons, the shape of a triangle, plus and minus, a dial with tiny indentations, and the on-off switch. It doesn't work. The nursing home has central heating, but you cannot control it from the bedrooms. Are you my son or my grandson? How old are you? Are you my son, the one that lives far away in that far away country? Why don't you want to have children? She asked me. It has been snowing all morning, just stopped. Look at the snow, she says, so clean. I am reading a brochure the doctor left earlier. Brain cells lose their ability to communicate with one another. Two abnormal structures called plaques and tangles are prime suspects in damaging and killing nerve cells. Let's go outside, my mother says. The park across from her window is covered with fresh snow. We cannot go outside, mother, in this weather, I tell her. At least open the window. I cannot breathe, she says. Plaques are deposits of a protein called beta amyloid that build up in the spaces between nerve cells. Tangles are twisted fibers of another protein called tau that build up inside cells. Take your children to the park. Play with them, she tells me. Snow is wasted when you don't have children. Open the window, my mother says. I want to feel the cold. I don't think we can do that. You may get sick, I say. Who cares if I die today or tomorrow? Open the window, she says. Just for 15 seconds, I tell her. 
I hope they don't see us. I take the bed's comforter and I swaddle my mother wheelchair and all like a cocoon. Fifteen seconds, I say. I open the window. The cool air enters the room like a giant, like an ice river. Fifteen seconds, I say, and we count together, whispering, and I close the window. Fourteen horses in a small chamber. Me da miedo la tormenta, padre. I am afraid of the storm, father. My father once told me that fear waits pile up like firewood outside the home of the heart. It is your job to decide how much firewood you want to bring inside. Some people bring a single log, a sliver, a shard, a splinter. Some people carry armfuls of wood. They stock up, they go back for, sec they go back for seconds as if invited to a feast. Long-term fear, almost undetectable, sudden fear, soft fear that feels like company or comfort. Tonight, Wild horses rustle in the small chamber of my heart, and quiet hoofs, lips twitching, teeth clacking like clean stones. They want me to open the door, to let them out into the night and the smooth uncertainty of wet grass and sharp breeze. Crickets are calling, faint music from a faraway town is calling. I arrange the firewood inside, each log like an old friend that comes to remember the past. I count the horses' heads, fourteen. We are all in. It's time to lock the door, to taste the security of roofs and walls. So easy to obey the hand that obeys the fear. So easy to light the fire. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna, uh, these are uh, pretty new poems. I'm gonna end with two poems, a little older. And um, in both of them, <clears throat> I blend uh, Spanish and English. Um, the first one is called Street Vendor. Street Vendor. Lo que le agrade, señor. Lo que le agrade. Whatever you like, sir. Whatever you like. The young girl is sitting on the sidewalk, but repeats her litany with tired enthusiasm. Vendo pulseras, pulseras de todos los colores. I sell bracelets, bracelets of all colors. It's Sunday evening and the last tourists walk back to their hotels, warm showers and soft blankets. She sells bracelets in the streets and train stations at restaurant patios before the waiters ask her to go. She may be seven or eight, has long hair, thin wrists, fast, precise hands, chipped nail polish. Yo hago las pulseras, señor, con bolsas de plástico. I make the bracelets myself, sir, with plastic bags. She tears the bags open with her front teeth, braids the shreds, tie the ends. Es fácil, she says, it's easy. She is alone, this girl. Alone like the woman I see some mornings walking on the freeway divider. ¿Dónde encuentras las bolsas de plástico? Where do you get the plastic bags? I ask her. En la basura. In the trash, she says. And basura sounds like amethyst, cathedral, tube rose. A veces, pocas veces, she says, las trae el viento. 
Sometimes, a few times, they are brought by the wind. Um, and this is the, the last poem, and thank everybody for being here today. It was a pleasure um, listening to you and, and to you. So, thank you. Gender disagreement. La casa está vacía. The house is empty. We cannot say la casa está vacío. Vacío is masculine. Casa is feminine. In Spanish, all nouns are either masculine or feminine, singular or plural. Articles, adjectives, past participles change according to the gender and number of the nouns they modify. We can use vacío with corazón, for example. El corazón está vacío. The heart is empty. Corazón and vacío are masculine singular. This gender number agreement cannot be broken. We cannot say los corazones están vacío because vacío is singular and corazones is plural. Los corazones están vacíos. That is the correct sentence. Some nouns are masculine and feminine. Mar, sí, for example, we can say el mar está vacío. We can say la mar está vacía. It's an exception that proves the rule. Tres mujeres asesinadas en menos de 48 horas, víctimas de violencia doméstica, the newspaper says. Three women murdered in less than 48 hours, victims of domestic violence. The newspaper says, asesinadas. History says, asesinadas. Grammar confirms gender and number agreement, asesinadas, because they are women, feminine, plural. Thank you.